Hello ladies. Time to get this show on the road. We've got a couple of minutes, I think, and uh, but I'm happy to say that I am going to be shared in the uh, group tonight, uh, Craft Around the Clock. I would like to thank uh, Tracy for adding me to the group. <clears throat> I'm happy to be here, and I hope that those ladies will come along and join us. Hi, Kristen, you're the first one to pop on. If you're coming in from the Craft Round the Clock group, please let us know who you are and where you're from. If you haven't met me before or you haven't watched me before, I'm Judy Mullins. I live in Tennessee in the Smoky Mountains, and I have Vintage to Chic, which I have been in business for well over 40 years. And um, I've just started making videos this last six months or so, and I enjoy doing it. So I hope I can teach you a little something tonight. But when you're on, just give us a shout out. Hey, Betty, glad to have you. I have a great group of ladies that comes along with me in a lot of the vi videos. Good to see you, Nancy. It's been a beautiful day here today. Be sure if you're coming from the uh, round the clock group that you let us know. So we'll know if we're in there and see where we're at. I'm going to set a timer down here on my, uh, on my iPad. I'm going to hit the timer because this is the first time I've ever had to work on a timeline. So I've got 45 minutes, so I'm not going to chat a whole lot. Hey, Janice, Roberta. I'm not going to chat a whole lot this evening. I'm going to try to just go right on and get into our project. And then uh, we'll talk a little later because I don't want to run over my time. Uh, if you have questions, I work by myself, so I don't always get up to answer all the uh, questions as you pop them on. So if you have them, put them in there as we go along or anything you need to know. I've posted a lot of new stuff on my page today. If you're not a follower of my page, please come over and join uh, Vintage to Sheep. Join us and uh, follow us. Spread the word for us so the word will get out and we'll grow a little bit. I also have a Etsy page, which is Vintage to Sheep. And I have a design group, which is called Maddie B. Design Studio, which is after my granddaughter, Maddie, who helps me with a lot of my computer stuff. So uh, this design we're using tonight is going to be one of my originals. And uh, I sell these on my Facebook page, and I also sell them on my uh, Maddie B. Etsy shop. Okay. Hello, Charlotte and April. This is the design we're going to be working on. This is what I have it printed on, and I print on rice paper. Today in my, in my uh, group, I listed a uh, whole listing of my favorite things. I don't get paid for that, so I just went down and categorized and listed them. I also give you a, a link to go in and be able to see these sheets on that page. The printed ones I don't sell on the Etsy shop. I just sell those digitals. Because I, I print as many as I can print, I just want to sell them in my Facebook. I don't want to sell them out to the world like on my Etsy shop because that's more than I want to get into. I'd rather sell those as digitals. But I'm going to do this one tonight, and I've printed it 8 by 10 It is in my shop. This design is for sale. I've printed it 8 by 10 and I've cut it out. So, and I've cut this one out precise. This is rice paper, which is very thin. See, it's transparent, almost like a napkin. Great to work with because it's a lot more forgiving than a napkin. So I'm going to lay that over there to the side and get it out of my way. And we're going to go ahead and get started on this one. This is the design. If you didn't see in the picture, this is what we're doing. This little bucket comes from Hobby Lobby. About 80% of what I do is either metal or glass, and I buy a lot of stuff from Hobby Lobby. And a glass, I use a lot of whiskey bottles and stuff, as you'll see if you've been with me. Good to see you, Tracy. Okay, this one, I'm going to do this design tonight and show you on this bucket. This was about, uh, see, if I didn't leave the price tag on it, but I think it's about 10 or $12 normally. So if you buy it on the week, it's 50% off the metal. You get it for like six or seven dollars, which is a great little piece to work on. Okay, so I have sprayed it. I don't don't do much with uh, um, chalk paint, as you know. If you those that you follow me know, I don't use very much chalk paint at all. I, I, in fact, I don't use chalk paint. I like a good, smooth finish when I'm working on it, and I use spray. 
I, the spray, except on wood. Now, I'll paint on wood. Hi, Shelby. You're a newbie. Glad to have you. Uh, this is what I use to spray with. This is Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch Ultra Coat Paint with Primer. This has been my go-to for many, many, many years. I love this. has the primer in it. Go outside. Start your spraying on your piece. Mist it lightly. It will take you a good 30 minutes to an hour to really paint this because you should mist a coat, let it dry for 15 minutes or so, go back and mist it again. So when I'm spray painting outside, I do a whole bunch of pieces. I just line them up on my back porch where I work to do that, and I do a whole bunch at one time. So I'll have them ready when I want to pull something to work on. Okay, I'm going to turn my camera down a little bit so that you can see what I'm working on instead of seeing me. And again, when we're finished, I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. And if I don't get to them, I'll come back to them and after the video and, you know, and get them in for you. Okay, turn this light up a little bit over here. I got my uh, big lights. I hope I'm doing okay with them. Okay, this is, got to put my glasses on. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the top. Hope you can see this over here. I'm going to paint this yellow and the black at the top stripes. The yellow that I love for this, for lemon colors, is Americana's Banana Cream. This is a very good color for yellow. I'm just going to put a little bit of this on my palette. I work from a palette. I don't work from a paper plate or something. I've worked from a palette for years, and I use a wet palette. So I'm going to put a little bit of my paint over here on my palette. And... Then I'm going to use a fairly wide brush so I'm not just painting, painting, painting. And I'm going to paint this section around here with the yellow. Let me get my bag over here so I'll be able to work with. I keep an old towel or something by me for working with. You want to use the edge of your brush. Let that brush do the work for you. When you're coming around, if you want a straight edge, don't go in this way and try to make a straight edge. Turn your brush to the side and pull it toward you. And you will be able to paint and get those edges good and straight without any worry. So you should just take you a minute or so to go right around that. Then we'll have to let it dry and do a second coat. My vo vo voice is still a little scratchy, girls. I've still got a, the lingering parts of a cold, so... Doesn't seem to be able to shake them real easy, especially in the summertime. We're trying to get the yard, work in the yard. Now, tomorrow we got a yard day. Working, I need to have a yard sale. I'm trying to get start cleaning out. Turn it where it's comfortable for me. Work my way right on around. Okay, I'm seeing a few more new ones. There's one from Canada, Kim and Rhonda. Rhonda, girls, I hope you're like what we see, what you see, and stay with us. We have a good time, and we work on a lot of different things. I paint and decoupage. I've painted for more years than I can remember, so I just added decoupage to it about three or four years ago. And it opened up a whole new world to add the two together. Hobby Lobby. I went to Hobby Lobby this week. They have so many new beautiful pieces in their spring line of merchandise. My, ca my camera or my phone has been acting up and I need to get a new one. I just haven't went to the store or I would have done a live from Hobby Lobby to show you all the new beautiful things I have. I picked up some uh, pizza, big pizza paddles, but they're all in their spring decor and they're already 40% off. So if you haven't been to Hobby Lobby in a while, you need to get it checked out. Okay, I've got that painted that stripe around there. Now I'm going to take a little black and paint the top stripe. Just a little bit smaller brush for this one. This one's up here at the top. Go around here. This is a quick project. I hope it's quick enough to get it in the 45 minutes. I've never done that. I see my 
let my iPad down here clicked off on me. I hope it's still, and it clicked my timer off. So listen, girls, keep a, no, it didn't. I've still, it's still going, so. If you see, I'm getting close to my time. Somebody tell me. <coughs> this is just regular acrylic black. I like Delta's black. I've used that for years. Delta's ceram coat. I like their black. It's good and strong and one coat coverage and that's what I like. I use all paints just about, except I don't use very much apple barrel. I have found that a lot of the colors I use in the apple barrel colors don't have much pigment to them, so I don't, I don't use any apple barrel paints. See, I got a little spot there now in that yellow, so I'm going to take a, grab a little bit of water and touch that and get that right off of there. Took my yellow too, but that ain't no big deal. Okay. You know what, I'm going to stop on that because that's not an important thing to be doing. Is that I'm going to go ahead and start putting this. I'm going to get this piece put on here for you. Okay. Now, this is, since my bucket is good and even, you know, it's not anything. Before I have showed you how to clip into the designs when you're going around something or going on around surface. But this one you don't have to because it's the way the bucket's made. So I've just took my print, cut it out. Going to lay it down on my bucket, just about, not center, a little bit lower on, lower to the bottom than to the top up there. And I have my decoupage here in a little container. As you know, I don't work out of that big bottle of decoupage, I mean of glue. And I always put a little water in my glue because it takes very little amount of glue to glue something down. A lot of people get in trouble with using too much glue. Okay, now I've got it where I want it. I'm going to hold it. Fold it back, take my glue, put it on there, just a very small amount, not putting much at all. Taking it around there, put a very small amount of glue on that. And then I'm going to take my finger and just start working it from the middle out. See, if you're working with a napkin, I mean with the print, it's a lot more forgiving and you can be a little more rougher with it. Like I can take my fingers and press that down real good and I don't have to be worried about ripping that uh, paper. Okay. See, it's just as smooth as can be. And I can take a piece of crumpled up saran wrap and put that on that also. So I've got that all glued down. Now I'm going to reverse it. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue under this side. Okay. Doing the same thing. Lay it down. Start from the middle. And come out with it. Come all the way out to my edges from the middle. Take my paper. Now I will take those itching. I will take uh, put a top coat on this uh, napkin, but right now I'm going to leave it because I don't want to get my hands in it. Let me uh, let me see here. I need a tissue. I don't want to get my hands in that, so I've just done that. I'm not going to put the top coat on yet. Cause I'm gonna go ahead and show you another step now. I have got a line. See this little design that I have put around this bottom down here? It's little S's that are connected together. I'm gonna to show you how to do that. Okay. I'm going to, I'm using a liner, a little fine tip liner brush, like so, real small liner brush. 
Okay, so I'm gonna dip it in the water. And how can you always see your lives? Okay, Nancy, I'm always on my lives on my Vintage to Sheep page. Just join my Vintage to Sheep page and follow us along and you will be able, you'll get a notice for every one. Now, when you're using your liner brush, see if I can get my palette over here. Let me turn you a little bit. Okay, see over here. See my palettes down here. I've got my black out here, and when you're using a liner brush, you want that paint to be about the consistency of ink. So I'm going to take my brush, dip it in my water up here, put it over here in my paint, pull it out, to the edge, you load that brush the way you're going to use it. It's a tip on the end of it, a, a very fine tip, and you want to load it flat, load a lot of paint in it till it gets all the way. The paint's just about like ink, and it'll be all the way up to the top of the ferrule of that brush. Then I'm going to roll it to a tip. Then I'm going to go right in here. I'm going to show you on paper first. Let's see if I can get down here and show you on paper. I'm going to do it larger on this paper so you can see what I'm doing. This is an S stroke. I'm going to hold my brush and I'm going to do an S like this. Okay. Then I'm going to go around and inside that S, I'm connecting them as I go around. This will take some practice. Get you a piece of paper, piece of cardstock or whatever, and your liner brush and just sit down and do them. Try, you know, play with them. And each one, one goes inside the other. See, I have went up and down that line like that. And I'm going to do that all the way around the bucket on two in two areas on my bucket. I'm going to do those little designs. And like I said, your paint is about the consistency of ink. Get this bail out of my way. And I'm going to start right up here at the top. And I'm going to go around using my little finger as my guide. My finger's going to guide my brush. And that brush is held straight up and down. Hard to talk and do this because you got to concentrate. Now, if you press that brush down, if you get down and, and you press it down like that, you'll get a big thick line. So you want to keep it right up on the tip of the brush, and it's just you're just using the very hairs on the end of that brush is all that you're using. This design I use on a lot of things. Anything I want to add a little bit to, you know, to give it another little bit of a sparkle or something, I add some designs around it. Either some checks or some stroke work or something. That makes a world of difference on your project. Just follow yourself right on around. You should be able to make six or eight little strokes before you have to load paint again. Like I've said before, that little finger does the work. That brush follows my little finger. I'm about halfway around. Got that side all the way around on that one side. I'm just going to flip it right on around and keep going around. I love to do lemons, and lemons are a big thing right now. So many people decorate. I sell so many pieces of things with lemons. If you haven't visited my page, Go over and look just to see all the designs and all the things that I do that's good for you. Give you some ideas and stuff, even if you're not shopping. And that's vintage to -chic .etsy com. And I've got about, oh, well over 200 items in my shop. And then my other page, I've got more than 100 of my digital designs in, in the other shop. 
which is maddiebdesigns.etsy.com. If you can find all that out, keep all keep up with all that by by joining my Vintage to Chic page. Follow along, and you can keep up with all the things that we do and all that I list. I list new things in there, new designs. I added three new designs today. Okay. One of them was sunflowers, and two were mixed-media designs. I mailed out four packages of clip art today to customers that come through my Facebook page. If we get to where we have time left here today, I'll answer all the questions that I can, you know, while we're going. But if I can't, I'll always come back and answer you and put it on, okay? Now, see, I've done that all the way around, and I would do the same thing on the bottom. But I'm going to go ahead now and put a top coat on this uh, piece here because I want to show you a little bit of how to shade, how to uh, enhance your design by shading and highlighting. So I'm going to go back in now and put the top coat cover on this uh, lemons. So I've got my Mod Podge. My Mod Podge, like I said, is thin down. And I'm going to go in. Make sure you got all your little edges. Always go around the edges of your piece and make sure all your edges are glued down good. And I'm working from the inside out of the, of the piece, not to not the other way. And it won't take but just a minute or two for this to dry because I'm using such a little amount of Mod Podge that it won't take it very long at all for that to dry. I don't, I've never sat with a drying tool. I may have to. I have a dryer now. It, since I'm doing online doing classes, I may have to, you know, do that at times. But when I'm working here on my own, I'm never working on one piece at a time. So I, while one piece is drying, I'm on to something else. I can finish three pieces in the same time that I normally, you normally would do one piece because you're waiting on drying time. So it's just a waste to me to sit there and wait for something to dry or to use a drying tool, a, you know, a hair dryer or something to dry them because I'm not in that hurry to get it dry. Okay, so I've got that coat on there. Now let's jump back over here and put the my little designs down on the bottom here while that's drying. Back to my brush and my black paint. And I'm going to start over here at the crease where the crease is in the bucket. Let's see, I think I'll do it this way. here and hold it straight up and down and put my little S's on there that brush is about to run drip on me Now, if you, were working, if you were working with a napkin, you wouldn't be able to just lay it down and, you know, on a piece like this and wait. You'd have to let that dry or, you know, do something to hold it up because that napkin would stick to whatever you're laying it down on. Uh, the paper is a lot more forgiving, like I said, a lot easier to use and more forgiving than a napkin is. If you order these prints off my Facebook page, they're three dollars, three ninety nine a sheet, plus the shipping. It's five dollar flat rate shipping, regardless of how many you buy, because you still have to pay the 
shipping and the tracking to get them to you. If you don't put that tracking on there, they don't hardly ever get where they're going. I added a video today that came out of my, uh, I have a group also called Creating with Judy, but it's just an extension of my Vintage to Sheep page. You, you're welcome to come and join it. There you show, everybody shows what they've been doing, and, you know, everybody can post on that page. It belongs to that group, so you can come in there. But I do have a few videos that I put in there to begin with before I started doing them on the Vintage to Sheep. So today I shared one over to the Vintage Sheep page about checks and stripes. That if you're into the black and white checks and the stripes, you really should go watch it. I've painted those for many, many years, and I did a video just explaining how to set up your piece for your stripes or checks. about around there. hard to concentrate and jabber at the same time, so excuse my quietness. Okay, I've got them the top and the bottom done now. Now me, I'm going to put some, uh, I have cut out some small pieces of just uh, clip art stuff that I'm going to put around. Instead of putting that same design on the other side of the bottle, on the other side of the pan, I just went around with some different clip art designs and add those around. So I'm going to do that now. Get those on. Okay. And I've got them cut out down here. And they're just pieces that I've cut out of other cut out of designs, things to just add to that. So I'm going to glue those on now. Okay. Sophie's from North Carolina. Jennifer, what's the name again? You're asking about the name of my shop or the name of the uh, my Etsy shop, my, my name on Facebook is Vintage to Chic, and my Etsy page is also Vintage to Chic, dot uh, Etsy dot com, and the design page is Maddie B Designs. You can find both of those links on my Vintage to Chic page. Okay, I have just put that down, put me a little bit of glue on there, no rhyme or reason as to where I'm putting. There's some little strawberries. Just laying those on there. Okay. This one says lemons on it. This one is another little strawberry, says home. Strawberries here, this little hang tag. This just gives you some decorations all the way around instead of having. Sometimes I would do something, I would put the design on both, you know, the same design on both sides, but I like this better, so I'm just adding these things around the bucket.
I use Mod Podge. I don't like to use the Mod Podge, girls, if you've worked with me before. I don't use my Mod Podge out of that jar or the big bottle because it gets this goopy stuff in it. When you're working out with your brush, every time you go back in it, you contaminate your glue. And if you're not careful, you'll lose half of that bottle before you get it done. So I buy mine by the gallon. I buy it on Amazon, and I buy it by the gallon, and I pour it into a small container like this, a little bit at a time, and I add a few drops of water to it. Okay, I think I've got enough of those scattered around there. Now, I'm going to go in and show you another piece here. Let me see what my time is down here, what I'm doing. Okay, I got about 15 minutes left. When I set something like this, I want it anchored down. We learned a long time ago painting canvas painting. Nothing sets down and don't have a shadow under it. If you have a pot of flowers sitting on a table, that table is the is the uh, underneath of that. And if you don't, they're just hanging out in midair like this one is. It's just hanging there. So I want to anchor it down, anchor it down to that piece. So what I'm going to do is shade underneath it. And you can use, if it was something that was outdoors like that, I'd put a little bit of green in here. But since it's like a table top, tabletop, I'm just going to take a little bit of, a little bit of a brown. I've got, uh, this is uh, Honey Brown, Deco Arts Honey Brown. I'm going to put just a touch of that on my palette. And I'm going to use my glazing medium. This is... Um, Deco Arts glazing medium and this helps me to move the paint to use it to move real easy without it being runny. If you dip this brush in water it's going to thin your paint down real thin. This has some body to it and this is to help you move paint without it running on you. So I'm just going to put out a few drops. It looks like your white paint so you have to be careful on your palette. I'm going to put just a few drops of that on my palette. Then I'm going to go in here Let me put the lid on my glue up here before I dump it over. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to wet my brush with that uh, medium, painting medium. And I'm going to load one corner, put one corner of my brush in that brown. Then I'm going to come down here and stroke it three or four times back and forth on my, me, on my palette so that it just blends from paint to nothing. If I, you know, pull a stroke across there, it, you'll see the paint on one side and it just blends down to nothing. Then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to lay this down. Now this goes across, so my strokes have to go across also. I wouldn't want to go up and down with this. You have to put it away. It's like putting a table under this. I'm going to put something under this that looks like it's sitting on something. So I'm going to start right over here to the end, lay it down, and I'm going to pull that stroke out. Just pull it to the side and I'm going to go right along underneath that piece, back and forth, and darken that underneath there, touching right up against the design. I'm touching the bottom of the design and then pulling that paint across there so that it puts a shading underneath that piece. And I'm making, it's either sitting on the table or it's sitting on the ground, but it's sitting down on something. And you want it to be sitting on something. Every time, if you had a bicycle hanging there, you'd want to put some shading underneath it so that it's got an anchor under it. And try not to leave none of the white showing when you're doing that. Just take it back and forth and try not to leave none of the white between your design and your shading there. Okay? See here? I've shaded that and it's all the lines go this way, not up and down. They go across the same way the pattern is. Okay? So I've got that on there. Now, Every little bit makes a difference, Chris. Every little touch you do makes a difference. Now I'm going to show you how to shade and highlight these lemons a little bit to look like, to make them look like they're more individual lemons. I can go in. Anything that's behind needs to be shaded. If you want it to set back, you shade it. If you want it to come forward, you highlight it. And as I've already got that brown, that brown is kind of the same uh, design as my uh, shading on my lemons would be. And I'm going to put me out just a touch of white to use for highlights. So I'm going to load my brush the same way with that painting medium. I use Delta White also. I'm putting a little bit of that medium on my brush, medium. 
and I'm going to load one corner again. Blend it on my palette. Then I'm going to choose which lemon I want to set back. By looking at that pattern, I can see that this lemon is behind this one. So I'm going to go right in here and I'm going to just bear, set using the whole flat of my brush, I'm going to pull a little shade line. I don't know if you can see that or not. You'll see that right there? See how I put that little shade line in between this lemon and this one? That sets this one back and brings this one forward. Okay, so anywhere you want to divide those, you add a little line between those two lemons. Okay, I'm going to go up here and do the same thing again. We'll come down and down that into that V. And that set that whole lemon here back behind the other two. So I'm going to work my way around. And the ones that are on the back side, I'm going to put a little bit of shading in there. And set them so that will set them back a little bit. See right down here, I'm going to go in here, set that one back behind. Any place I want. This one that's cut down here, put a little shading behind it. And it'll pull it right away. You separate them by doing that. I can, uh, let's see where I've got it. I've just about got it. I'm going to put a little bit right here. That's behind those flowers. Okay. Okay. This one I can set just separate a little, separate it a little bit from this strawberry by just putting a little bit of a shade line there. So see, I see how the shade marks are in there. So anything you want to go back, you shade. If you want to bring it forward, you do just the opposite and you highlight. So if I want to highlight the one on the top, I clean my brush and I go back in and load some of the medium and I pick up some white paint. My white is on the tip of my brush now and I'm going to go in and I'm going to highlight the top lemon right here. I'm going to pull this one out by putting a white. I use the full line of the brush. See how I brought that white line up on that one? And it doesn't, it's not a stripe. If you have it uh, blended good on your palette, it'll look just like, you know, it just blends across there. But if you, if you don't have it blended good, it'll just look like you striped it. So just practice a little bit with it. See? That makes a world of difference in whatever you're painting. When you highlight, and those lemons, as you know, lemons have a little bit of color in the middle of them. You might hit that little white in there, just kind of pat it, and it'll pull that white out. It's in the middle of that lemon. Put a little more highlight in the middle of it. Every little bit of stuff you do like that makes it look more like it's hand-painted. Okay, I think we just about got that done. Okay, I still have to uh, see what else I have to do. Okay, I'll, I can do the black, the top. You know, I'm going to, all I'm going to do on this top, I'm not going to finish it showing you because it's just black around the top and nothing is different. With the yellow, I will put two coats of yellow on there. Then I'll take the wood end of my brush and put some dots on there. Dipping that in the black, put dots on there with the very wood end of my brush. That's all. Now these pieces, see this is a little hang tag. And because it's a hang tag, I think it should have a, a string on it. So I'm going to go in on those that are tags, using my liner brush that I used done with the little things, loading it with a little bit of black. And I'm going to go right here. See if I can do it this way so you can watch me. Set it down, come up, make me a kind of a circle and around. And I put a little tag, hang, just like that's got a hang tag on it. This one already has one on it. Now let's see where I've got another one. Okay, this one right here's got one. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to set that brush down, pull it up in a circle. Now you'll notice I only put the dip, the first one down in that hole and the rest one just goes to the top of the sign because it's behind the sign. Okay, so I believe, okay, this one over here has a hole in it. This one right here needs a little rope on it. So I'm coming up, go a circle, and come down. Just put me a little hang tag on that. Okay? Now, I can also go in here. This is finished. All this is finished except for, you know, I've done, put the top coat on it and everything. So now I'm going to add some curly cues. This time, I'm going to go back to my liner brush, to my striper that I made those little S marks with, load it with the black, 
Let me see how much time I got here, girls. I don't want to run over. Okay, we've got about six minutes. Okay, now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make some curly cues. That handle gets in my way. I should have took it off. Okay, and I'm just going to hold my finger, set it down, come up, curl it, and come out. See? And I want to do that in a few places around the design. Okay, I think I'll put one down here, coming out of this flower. Right here. No rhyme or reason as to why you do them. It's just, you know, a matter of putting them in there. Just another little touch. It gives you another little accent to it. See? I like this lemons. I like this. I do this design on a lot of different things. And I will go in now. If you haven't seen me spackle before, I do that with a toothbrush. And after I get the yellow done and all that, I will go in with my toothbrush, which I'll show you down here on the piece of paper how I do that. I've got a piece of palette paper laying here. And this one I will, let's see what I've done. I use just, most of the time I use a real, real dark, like a rusty colored red or a dark maroon red. That one's like a rusty color. So I'm going to put, this is, uh, that one's not been open. Let's see what this one is. Okay, this one's barn red. I'm going to go in and I'll show you how to do this. Just showing you on my palette. I'm going to, I take a little bit of my paint. And I have a bunch of old toothbrushes over here. I use an old toothbrush. And I use my palette knife. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of water. Just a drop. Add it to that paint. And make my paint. Not, it's not really watery as much as it's more like whipped cream. So I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to sneak in there. Don't, don't go down and glob that and load that big load on the end of that paintbrush. You only want to load the tip of it. We'll go ahead and sneak in that paint and just pat it and get some paint right on the tip of that toothbrush. Then I would do this on my pan over there, but I'm going to do it on the paper here to show you how. Then I take my toothbrush and I'm going to pull that tooth, the brush I'm holding down and the palette knife I'm going to pull toward me. So when I go like this, see how it flips that out on the paper? I'll show you, pick it up and show you when I, in a minute. But you can go all over your piece for that. And I, I spackle almost everything because I think it hold, hides a multitude of sins. Anything you've got a place you want to hide real good or you've made a goof up or something, put you a little heavier spackling on there and you'll take care of that. Okay, let's see. If there's any questions, we've got a few more minutes, so let's see. Uh, okay. Thank you, Maxine. I enjoy teaching. I've done it for many, many years. And Jennifer, you say in two days you've learned so much from you. I'm so grateful for that. That makes me feel good. Okay, let's see here. Uh, you all are very welcome. I hope you'll come along. Uh, rice paper uh, from one of your prints. They are. You can go into my shop. Uh, Kim, you can go into my shop and look under my uh, guides or look up on the top and you'll see all of my prints. They're all done and uh, have a stock number on them. And if you want to order them, you just send me a private message with what you want to order and I'll print them and send them out to you. Bill you with PayPal. Okay, they're printed and they are printed on rice paper. If you want to print your own, I have a link in there to the rice paper I use and it's from Amazon. It's very, very good to print on. Okay. Uh, spray just, you spray a light coat at a time until you get all your painting on. And I will varnish this one. I will varnish it with either Josonia's uh, varnish. This is a varnish I use, which is chromium. This is in my links too over there. She tells you how to get this. This is from Dick Blick is where I get it now. And this is the satin. I use this in the satin and I use it in the gloss. And that is Chromium, C-H-R-O-M-A, apostrophe S, Josonia, J-O-S-O-N-J-A. Her satin and gloss varnish is what I use to varnish with. I put three or four coats on everything that I do. If I use the spray varnish, I use the Rust-Oleum spray in the uh, same brand as I use the white paint. And I buy it in the gloss. And uh, I prefer to use the, the brush on, but sometimes if I'm in a hurry, I use the spray. This is really good stuff, this brush on varnish is. Put it on with a soft brush. 
Okay, everything. Uh, do I spray my paper after printing? Sometimes I do because I have both inkjet and I have laser printers. And I have some inkjet printers that I've used that I don't, I don't have to spray them, but I do just to be on the safe side. And then I have laser printers. I've got five printers sitting here around me plus a black one. So I've really got six printers. And none of them are really what I would like to have. I can't, I keep buying them and hoping for the best. Okay, I hope that some of you girls have been come in from the other group and that you'll come back and join us again. And I think, let me check my time down here. Okay, it's time for me to get out of here, girls. I've enjoyed, hope you've enjoyed it. And like I said, I'll go back and read the comments and I'll answer any question that you have in the comments. And if you have any more, shoot them to me on my page and I'll be happy to help you. I'm out of here. Good night.